You're watching Bread and Roses, a weekly political social magazine that's broadcast in English and Persian via New Channel TV. Hello everyone, I'm Maram Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. In this week's program, we'll interview Arzu Toka from Germany on religion, values and migration. We'll also be talking about the war in Syria, press TV and sexual harassment, gender segregation and unveiling in Iran, the arrest of a doll in Saudi Arabia, as well as breastfeeding adult men. You don't want to miss this. Stay with us. In the week that passed, there are many issues that we'd like to discuss with you. Well, the first, of course, is what's happening in Syria. There's a new report now on the number of dead in the Syrian war. It is now 470,000 people. That is 11.5% uh, of the population. Life expectancy has dropped to 55 years and four months. And you've got massive displacement. Uh, there's 45% of the population of Syria has been forced to move. Uh, the numbers are 4 million who've left the country and 6.36 million who are internally displaced. And those who are not actually moved, they are constantly being bombarded. We'll see on a, a screen TV every day what the families in Syria are going through. And it is, is a human tragedy. Um, I was listening to the uh, news on the Munich peace process. While they're discussing peace, they're actually arming both sides. And people sitting round table, you know, they're just a bunch of criminals. You'll see from Saudi Arabia to Turkey to Iran to represent of the uh, um, Western governments who are actually arming, the Syrian government. You, you, uh, you know, a spectrum of people actually who have committed war crimes have contributed to this situation. Yeah, it's always funny how they've got people who actually are part of the problem, yes. who sit at a table to decide on uh, the peaceful solution to the problem that they've created. Yes, and it's very clear that in this situation, uh, you know, the public opinion needs to be on the side of the Syrian people. They need to be supporting the refugees who are actually fleeing the, um, the horrible uh, war and anybody who you know, advocates that they should just stay and fight they have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, definitely. And uh, following on with that, you know, you have this sort of wheeling and dealings that we've talked about before with, for example, the Iranian regime where rights issues are secondary and not even secondary. They're at the end of the bottom of the list to making profit. And of course, now we see that Cyprus has gone to uh, Iran from Greece, uh, had a meeting with Khamenei. And he's, he's praised him for been such a great leader and I think that's a bit that's a bit <laughs> and it wasn't yeah. April Fool's Day either no it wasn't mm. uh, and I think that's a, a bit of a shame that uh, people who supposedly represent uh, the left and the progressives actually succumbing to the Islamists that's the weakness of the regressive and pro-Islamist left yeah and it's it's uh, it's uh, you know no one has killed the left more than the left and working class, more than the Islamic movement. I mean, it has annihilated the left. In any country or in yeah. Middle East and North Africa. And to go and sit with them, yes. yeah, it, it's, it it's outrageous. Yes. And of course, with when we're talking about countries like Iran, like Syria, the issue of women is at the forefront here. And we know on social media, there's been a lot of talk around the press TV journalists. Press TV is an Iranian regime-owned TV arm of the regime and one of the journalists Shina Shirani she has uh, raised uh, you know the sexual harassment she faced by her boss there and she's had to flee the country and she's actually published the, uh, the harassment um, uh, on her phone and on texting and she's actually complained how she was treated so uh, um, in a degrading uh, manner all throughout, and she had she she had no option to um, actually complain. She had to flee Iran, and that's the um, status of many women in Iran who work within the environment uh, of the religious um, uh, government in Iran has, has created. Um, the complaining to uh, of these authorities is meaningless because yeah. we remember the situation of Rehana 
who was executed. Yeah, Rehane Jabari, yeah. she was executed for trying yeah. to defend herself from yeah. being raped. Yeah. And again, we hear many of such cases where women are actually persecuted for standing up to or um, you know, trying to push back yeah. the sort of harassment that they're facing. You know, some have told her, well, she should have complained. Really? Complained to who? Press TV bosses or the Iranian regime, where the odds are stacked up against women. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, uh, also when we're talking about women, of course, you know, there is the situation of sexual harassment at the workplace, but we know, you know, it, it is a society, like many Islamic uh, run societies by run by the Islamists where there is gender segregation so on the 15th of February there's going to be a volleyball match people in Iran love volleyball and of course women are not allowed to go and there's this huge campaign calling for permission that women should be allowed to watch matches it's a basic human right yeah and that's that's it has a lot of both international support and international federation sports federation of various kind should actually put pressure on the Islamic regime actually, you know, to boycott and do not allow Islamic regime of Iran to participate really until they have uh, opened the stadium and sports arena to every citizen in Iran. Yeah, including, of course, half the population of, of their course, country, yeah. which is women. Now, you know, uh, when you look at Islamic uh, run states like uh, the Iranian regime, like Saudi Arabia, there is this huge sort of, there is these morality police, these guidance, Islamic guidance police that come to ensure that people are dressed properly. Um, we just saw a video of a woman in Saudi Arabia being beaten because, violently beaten because she refused the orders of the morality police to cover her face. And of course, in Iran, it's the, the case. Just to give you some statistics from 2014, three million uh, people were issued warnings about the way they dress. 18,000 people were prosecuted and 200,000 people had to give a pledge, mainly women, that they would never dress that way again. And so there's been this wonderful app that's been created. Yeah, the app has been uh, created to um, so people could, could uh, actually warn each other and identify and pinpoints where the morality police are um, set up temporary checkpoints so people could avoid it. Yeah, and, and that's actually a brilliant app. And the people who developed it, uh, they've basically said, why do we have to be humiliated for our most obvious right to wear what we want? So that's an app that I think is going to be very useful, not just for uh, people, women, men in Iran, but also in Saudi Arabia and elsewhere. So fingers crossed that app is going That's to explode. That's a brilliant you know, pow power of social media in interest of population. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And of course, uh, possibly even dolls in Saudi Arabia could use that app. I don't know if you heard the, <laughs> the news report of a doll being arrested. Yes, you heard me right. A doll being arrested. Yes, there was a because launch of a... she was unveiled. Yeah, absolutely. There was a launch of a... Um, yeah, absolutely. There was a launch. <laughs> and as part of a launch of a, uh, a product, there was a, there was a doll, you know, to, uh, to, as part of the launch for the children to come and play. Was she and handcuffed and dragged away? I have no idea, but he was arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And of course, I, I mean, we've even heard of stories like this in Iran where mannequins who are not properly veiled yes. were arrested yes. as well yeah. Yeah. yeah and of course but more seriously uh, the doll at least uh, will not face uh, persecution uh, but uh, we've you might have heard recently that in Iran uh, there are uh, there's a metal band called Confess and two of their musicians Khosravi and Ilkhani aged 23 and 21 they have been arrested they're facing blasphemy charges for their satanic music yes and the underground music in iran is very uh, live and kicking and it's, it's, it has a you know a lot of uh, followers and the um, islamic regime doesn't know what to do so they were occasionally they arrest a, a group trying to sort of make an example we remember the happy group and uh, um, uh, last year um, and now we have the metal group being arrested and there is a campaign internationally to support them and we urge all our supporters and viewers to join the campaign for the freedom. Yeah, free confess. Now there is a debate within some in the Islamic 
you know, scholars debate. and yeah, debate. Let's put it that way. Uh, about a hadith of Muhammad's, uh, which says that an adult, uh, a, a woman can breastfeed an adult man in order so that she Stranger. can then yeah, so that she can then have a relationship with him because otherwise, you know, you're not allowed to mix with those who are not religiously prescribed to you. And, and this is true. Uh, so basically, I breastfed him so we can sit together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think this is wrong. This is so I wrong. Think the whole thing is, is wrong. Um, and the reality is that there is everybody's referring to everybody's referring to this different divides within different groups, Islamic group. They all agree there is such thing as the hadith, but the dispute hmm. is whether it is applicable to everybody or yeah. just a section, a specialist interest group of a section hmm. very close to the Islamists, they are allowed to do that. But it's true. <laughs> and actually, on the um, uh, Egyptian TV, the two people who were actually debating this issue, um, they started fighting each other because, <laughs> because they, they couldn't tolerate it. One side was said, actually, it's true, but it's for a specialist you know, section of the society, a special side of, section of the society. The other said, no, actually, it's how this applies to everybody. Let go, and everybody started breastfeeding each other. <laughs> and they had a big fight. <laughs> this is just crazy. I know this is wrong. <laughs> So forget, uh, forgive it's, us. It's very, it's very problem. wrong. It's Islamist problem. <laughs>
who killed my own family because of the honor. And I go back to the traditions, to the norms, to immigrating, to see the new world, to take them or give them. Which culture are existing around us and what we see and what we give and what we take. This is the poem. And uh, the second part of this book is about a woman, about, about a mother uh, who lose her daughter to an uh, Islamic uh, group. And uh, they fight each other and the daughter go away. And after that, after the mother says, go away, she understood immediately what she did. And she looked for her daughter, but she's gone. And so she's writing letters, writing letters and try to explain what was her feeling, what is her log logic, and why did she that or this so, and why she wants that she go out of this Islamic group. And in these letters, you even reading her, uh, her past life, because she was an Islamic family, and she fight it for her freedom and go out of them and try to make a very free uh, a girl from her daughter uh, who lives in freedom and uh, uh, without any borders and uh, her daughter becomes an islamist yes and her daughter becomes an islamist and i wanted to make this book uh, like a letter to the girls who are going to islamic groups and in these uh, letters I explain what's important for to be democratic and for to be a free woman. A free woman is a real honor woman because she uh, is knowing what she do. If uh, a woman may, uh, uh, if uh, anything happens in her life, she has to choose to say yes or no. And uh, this is very important. Nobody is in no situation without any way. There are always two way, uh, possibilities, yes or no. It is, it is possible. With the book, were you trying to reach um, the, the actual girls who were, were going? Uh, and have you heard anything from anyone who has read the book and its effects on them? Um, I'm a long time now in uh, this um, uh, case um, to read Quran and uh, to read the Hadith and to look to the Islamic uh, uh, groups. And I'm very sad about uh, Turkey, my ex-country. <laughs> I'm coming from Turkey. And uh, that's the reason why I uh, wrote that. Uh, it is not really an experience with uh, this or this girl. I heard about a lot of women uh, which have this problem. Mm, it's not uh, explicit one girl. Do you think there, there is a way to resolve the situation, to stop uh, young women from joining the Islamists, and how, how can that happen? Of course. Um, I think it's very important to uh, know uh, that we can have values without religion. I must not have a religion for to know I have not to kill people. I must not have a religion for to know that I have to be loyal to friendship or to idea. Uh, I think an uh, important point is really education. Education and again education. Thank you very much. Thank you. In this week's Slice of Life, there's a wonderful photo of a woman unveiled holding up a sign against compulsory veiling. What's interesting, though, is 
where this photo is taken. Yes, every year Islamic regime of Iran celebrates the establishment of the uh, um, Islamic government in Iran and it distorts the narrative of what happened in 1979, which was a left-leaning popular revolution, but it was actually destroyed by the Islamic regime. It was interesting that the dominant sort of narrative and it's all religious, and suddenly pops out this uh, young uh, sort of woman holding a sign saying, you know, no to compulsory uh, hijab. Yeah, I mean, I think that is just a beautiful photo. One, it takes a great deal of courage because you are amongst a protest that is supportive of the Iranian regime's narrative of what happened in the revolution. And here you are unveiling in a country where veiling is compulsory and where it is a prosecutable offense. So you can be, you can meet uh, fines, you can uh, be imprisoned even for up to two months for it. So it's a wonderful act of bravery, but it also just shows how much, you know, this fight back against um, Islamism and the Islamic regime of Iran it is so clear for all to see in Iran. Yeah. Whether you're talking about the app that warns people of yeah. where the guidance, uh, yes. you know, morality police are, the gash to yeah. Ershad yeah. and all, or whether you have, you know, women just unveiling yeah. in the public space. And, and opposition to Islamic regime bubbling from the music, the you know, rock music, to uh, women's movement, to apps, you know, young people. Uh, it's not going to last long, I think. Oh, yeah. That, that would be a great day. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this week's program. We look forward to seeing you again next week at the same time and same place. Until then, have a lovely week. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to a year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the vo alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or web comics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.